Now, it can be said you can throw just about anything during April and in the spring and catch bass, but there are some lures that perform better than others because the bass are fairly predictable. So let me walk you through what the bass are doing in April, specifically here in Ohio, and I'm going to show you the five lures that I have tied on all month long. So as you can see behind me, <laughs> it's the end of March. There's snow on the ground, and it is around 18 degrees. And the water temperature right now is just shy of 43 degrees. So going into April, this is going to jump up into the 50s, which is prime time at the beginning of the fishing season. Even though I can catch them in 47, 46, fairly predictably, when you start getting up into the 50s and the 55, ooh, that's the juice. So what are the bass doing in April? Well, at least here in Ohio, they are getting ready to eat. They're moving up to their secondary points and making their ways to the shallows. So what they're doing is making their migration paths back to the shallow waters when they need sunlight to be able to lay their eggs during spawn. Here's the thing, April fishing, man, it can be brutal. So when you catch one, take notes. When you figure out the pattern, you're going to have a good day. All right, so these are the five lures I have hooked up in April. Let's start off with number one. That's going to be this guy right here. This is a, look, it's got, <laughs> the hooks are rigid <laughs> because they're frozen for me fishing this morning. There we go. Get them unfrozen. <laughs> All right, so this guy right here is the Straight King 1.5 KVD Square Bill, and this is the color that I use. This is going to be the Phantom Watermelon Crawl. I love this thing. Actually, I think it's called the Phantom Watermelon Seed Crawl. Now, how I fish a square bill throughout the summer is a lot different than how I fish a square bill when the water temperatures are in the low 50s, high 40s, and I really have to fish this thing super slow. And so typically what you want to do with a square bill is knock it off any type of uh, cover that you can find, kind of get those reaction bites. When the water is so cold, uh, I'm just trying to make a really easy meal for those bass. So I'm going to be throwing this out and just painfully, guys, I'm talking painfully slow, rolling this in, making it for a real easy meal. I typically fish this in around five to eight feet of water. It has enough drawing power to get those bass to come up off the bottom, see this thing, realize it's going really slow, and boom, slam it. I've had a lot of great bass on this, on the KVD 1.5. So I have this hooked up, and uh, it's been year after year has performed for me. He hooked up on 17 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, I typically only use Seaguar and Vizex, and I have that on a 7.3 medium heavy casting rod. Uh, just the way I like it, so. All right, the second lure I have hooked up in April is going to be the Ned Rig, this guy right here. Uh, I started experimenting pouring my own colors, but I also like the KVD Ocho Ned Rig, as well as the Z-Man Ticklers. And I'm also experimenting with this guy. This is a Nico. Zaza Power Ned, I believe, or Super Ned. I think it's Super Ned uh, in straight black. I usually don't have this hooked up to a casting rod. It's usually on a spinning rod with eight pound fluoro. Once again, Seaguar and Vizex. Uh, there's four different ways I like to, to fish the Ned. Uh, my least favorite is actually the straight swim, just swimming it through the water. Uh, I don't have a lot of luck with that one. The second I have luck sometimes, I basically just drag it along the bottom and let it dead stick. It's really great for this Nico type of um, material because this floats and so this sticks way up in the air and has really great action. Uh, the third way I like to fish a net is kind of a swim and glide. I throw it out, pull it over, and then let it kind of fall. Swing it up, kind of let it fall. And the fourth way is my favorite. It's allow this thing to sink to the bottom and just kind of pop, pop, pop. Just kind of like hang out a little bit. Pop, pop, let it hang out a little bit. And it's a really great way to get those fish that are on the bottom to come down and smash this thing. By far, that's my favorite retrieve for the Ned Rig. So unlike the Wacky Worm, I'll fish all the way back to the boat because I'll get hits anywhere from the time it hits the water all the way to the time I pulled out of the water. So that's the Ned Rig. All right, let's move on to the third lure I typically always have hooked up in April. And this right here is the lure that I have caught the biggest and most bass in March. And I'm going to have it hooked up all the way through April. That is the Mega Bass Mag Draft 8-inch. So I have the 6-inch. I have the 10-inch also behind me. But the 8-inch, especially here where I'm fishing, they absolutely love this bait. And trust me, when this thing gets bit... It's no small fish. So when fishing this bad boy, I have it on 20 pound fluoro. And what I love about this, it's called a mag draft because there's a magnet in the bottom of this lure. And so what you do is you take this hook, kind of tuck it up in there and the magnet's supposed to hold. It doesn't hold really well, be completely honest with you. So you always have to, every time you throw it and bring it back in, 
put that back in there. So I run this on 20 pound straight fluorocarbon. And what I love about this, you have to fish it super slow, right? If you fish it too fast, it starts rolling over. And so it's a really slow retrieve. And this thing, the head bobbles back and forth and this tail just imparts an incredible action. And the big bass just love it. And whenever you catch one, uh, it can't use the weight of the lure to throw it. And so usually when you got them pinned, you got them pinned because this thing pops out and you kind of have this straight line. Imagine the hooks in the bass mouth. And so they can try to throw this, but it doesn't matter because this is hooked into the mouth and they can't really use that weight too much. And so I love this lure, catching some bigs. They are expensive. The eight inch, I think costs like 25 bucks, but um, you'll get probably 20, 30 fish out of the eight inch. So definitely worth it because when you get bit, they're the big ones. I also have hooked up this monstrosity right here, <laughs> which is the 10 inch. Uh, with the 10 inch, I put a little trailer hook on it. I and mean, what you can do is you basically just tuck that into the bottom of the bait here. And so if you get you know, bass come up on the bottom of that tail, uh, they might come and grab it. <laughs> uh, but if they're not big enough, they're not going to be able to get all the way up to the, the big hook. And so it's nice to have a little trailer hook here. So you can hook that up. This does not, that trailer hook does not come with the bait. Uh, these are expensive as well. You're going to run probably $35 for the mag draft 10 inch, but sick baits, especially in April. Fourth lure I'm going to have hooked up, and it's kind of crazy because most guys won't be bringing this out until the middle of the summer, is the wacky worm. So I will catch hundreds and hundreds of fish on the wacky worm all throughout the summer, but I actually start bringing it into my rotation in late March, early April, but I fish it a little bit different in March and April than I do the rest of the year. And I'm surprised that I just started making <laughs> my own baits, and I put so much salt in these bad boys, and I'm surprised they're even staying together <laughs> so in april how i'll fish this is i'll throw it out there and i'll let it fall all the way to the bottom and it's just i fish it just a whole lot slower than i typically would throughout the summer so i'll let it fall to the bottom just give it a little twitch let the bass know that it is alive but i don't scurry it away really fast because i want to provide that easy meal for that very lethargic bass um, it's still very cold water and I don't want to make this more work uh, than it needs to be for that lethargic bass sitting at the bottom of your body of water. And so I'll pop it and just let it sit for five seconds. Twitch, twitch. I'm not moving it very far in March and April. And that's when these bad boys usually get bit. And that's it with this bad boy. If you can be patient in April, more patient than you typically are fishing the wacky worm, you will pick up some nice size bass. I have it hooked up with a medium power, fast action kind of finesse fishing rod on eight pound fluoro, once again, in Vizex. And I usually use a one-aught or two-aught type of circle hook. I believe this is a beak hook. I've been getting in some of the trapper hooks as well. All right, let me take you to the last and final lure that I have hooked up in April. I always think it's a good idea to fish videos for my kayak, but it's like 15 times harder. The wind's blowing you around, freaking snowing, ice, you're dropping crap in the water. All right, so this is the final lure that I usually have with me during April, and this is going to be the suspending jerkbait, which is caught up in my line right now. Come on, get out of there. Oh my gosh so cold out right now i like the suspended jerk bait and i really only break these out whenever i see the bass busting the surface on bait fish so i'll break this bad boy out uh, when or when i'm picking up bait balls and i see that they're suspended i'll roll this through and i'll work it all kinds of different ways sometimes when you're working this jerk bait underwater a lot of times if you're pulling it through a bait ball you will actually hook up with some of those little pieces of bait and they'll come in on your hook. And so once you get those, it's gonna be a clue, right? It's gonna be a clue to hop back in your box and try to mimic that particular piece of bait as much as you possibly can. And that's gonna help you definitely get more bites. Also, I like to fish this over top of like underwater channels, especially when you come out from under like a underpass and they have those, they're kind of dredged out so boats can get through there. I love throwing jerk baits. So I typically will only fish these in March, April, and May. Then I kind of put them away for the rest of the year, but definitely a lure that I have on in April. Yeah. 
This one's got some knockers in it. When it comes to the fishing the jerk bait, usually it's gonna be on a top water rod. It's gonna be 10 to 12 pound fluoro. And so that's kind of how I fish that bad boy. All right guys, so there you have it. The five lures that I have hooked up in April. Let me know. This is a kind of a new type of video for me. I've never done one like this before. Let me know if that's something you like or if there's additional information you would like to hear. I might do these every month. Look, the bass are hitting over here. Oh my gosh, drive me crazy. Shooting a video and that's always when the bass start blowing up everywhere. Hey guys, over a thousand videos on the channel and here's one that YouTube thinks you're gonna like right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see ya. Woohoo! Here we go. See you guys.